So we have this reaction stoichiometry problem where we have liters. We're trying to find how many liters of carbon dioxide gas are produced if we have 4.7 grams of this glucose here and it reacts completely. So here's our glucose and we have 4.7 grams. So let's write this down here, 4.7 grams and that's glucose. So there's our glucose and we want to end up with liters of carbon dioxide, so liters of CO2. That's what we're looking for. So this is going to help us kind of figure out what we need to do to get there. So first off, when you're given grams in a stoichiometry problem, you're going to convert it to moles. So we're looking for moles of glucose, and we're going to convert that to moles of CO2. So if we know the moles of CO2, then we can just get the liters. And the way we're going to convert that is we're going to use a mole ratio. The mole ratio, that comes from the balanced equation. So we have 1 to 2 to 2. That's our mole ratio. So that's how we convert from moles of glucose to moles of CO2. So I convert my grams to moles, and when I convert these grams to moles, divide by the molar mass of glucose, I end up with 0.026 moles of glucose. If you need help with moles and grams, there's a link at the end of this video. So now, to get to moles of CO2, I'm just looking at the ratio. And I can see that for every one mole of glucose, I get two moles of carbon dioxide. It's just doubling. So I just need to double this number. 0 0.026 times 2 is 0 0.052. And that is our moles of CO2. So at this point, we convert our moles to liters. We multiply our moles by 22.4 liters per mole. And we end up with 1.16 liters of carbon dioxide gas. So you get your grams, you get moles of what you're looking at, the given quantity, use the mole ratio, get moles of the desired quantity, and then convert it to whatever you need, in this case, liters. Let's take a look at this again and use a little bit of a different technique, still exactly the same thing with the same answers. This might help you understand even a little better about this mole ratio. So if you want to check your work that you did the mole ratio correctly, you could say we have the 0.026 moles of the glucose. That's what we found here. And we don't know how many moles of carbon dioxide we have. So we're going to use the coefficients again, just setting up a ratio. 0.026 is to 1 is x is to 2. Cross multiply. 1 times x, that's x. 2 times 0.26, that's 0.05 two moles and that's what we found before so you can do the mole ratio like this with just a simple ratio one last way your teacher may have taught it to you this way this is a great way to do it as well we're going to use a conversion factor kind of a dimensional analysis again we're just doing the same thing we're using our mole ratio but your teacher may have shown you this way so we take the moles that we're given and we multiply that by a conversion factor, and we use these coefficients as well. So we have moles of glucose on the top, and to get rid of that, we need to multiply it by a conversion factor that has moles of glucose here on the bottom. That way, these will cancel out, and on top, since we're looking for carbon dioxide, we'll put moles of CO2, and we'll end up with that as our unit. So now we just look at the ratio. For every one mole of glucose, we have two moles of CO2. Now we do the math. Moles on top and the bottom cancel out. 0 0.26 times two moles. That equals, you guessed it, 0 0.052 moles. And it's going to be moles of CO2, which is what we're looking for. Then if we wanted that to go to liters, we multiply by that 22.4 number, or we could change it to grams or particles if we wanted. So those are some different ways to help you think about this. That mole ratio is often challenging for students, so I hope this helped. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.